Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the FTD University webinar titled Marketing Your Retail Store in This Crazy New World. Today, you will explore the new realities of marketing your flower shop. You'll leave with an understanding of what has changed, what remains the same, and how to navigate these new retail realities. Our featured presenter today is Bob Nagin, co-founder of Whizbang Training, which was created to help independent retailers like you thrive in today's super competitive market. Bob founded the Mackinac Kite Company, a small chain of specialty toy and kite stores in 1981 when he was only 23 years old. He had just graduated from college, didn't want to get a real job, and loved flying kites. It didn't take long for him to realize that his passion for his product was not enough to make him profitable, and then he has spent the next 20 years learning how to be a successful merchant. Bob and his wife, Susan, are recognized as leading retail experts, are the creators of the acclaimed Retail Mastery System, the Retail Sales Academy, and the Retail Success Summit. Bob is well-known keynote speaker and trainer and has given over 1,000 speeches in 50 different retail industries. Once Bob is finished with his presentation, we will open up the webinar for questions. And if you have a question, simply type it in the question box on the upper right side of your screen and feel free to submit your questions during the presentation. So without further ado, I would like to turn things over to Bob to begin the webinar. Welcome, Bob. Well, thank you, Emily, and uh, thank you to FTD for having me here today. It's an honor. I've done a lot of work with you, FTD, and you, florists, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here. You know, I, I don't have to tell you how crazy, 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 you know, the last four months have been. And, you know, it, there's been a fundamental shift in the way that retail is done. And for the first three months, everybody was trying to stay alive. Everybody was just trying to somehow navigate it. But I think that, well, no, I know that patterns are emerging and trends are emerging. And what the new reality is going to look like is becoming clearer. We don't know what the future will bring. But, you know, as Emily said, I, I've, you know, I've spent the, my last 40 years uh, with brick and mortar, independent retailers like you. And I've been really, really working with a lot of people during this whole pandemic. And I think that uh, I've learned some lessons and I have some perspectives that will be valuable to you. But before we begin, let me just, you know, Emily gave a brief introduction. Let me just reintroduce myself to you for just a moment. So there's a picture of me in 19, you know, in the early 80s when I had just opened my first retail store, the Mackinac Kite Company. That's me on the left with the bad mustache and the short shorts. But I guess uh, the point here is I've been doing this a long time. I, you know, I've I spent 20 years working the floor just like you do. And, you know, so I've earned the right to call myself a retail veteran, right? But now what I do, and now what Susan and I do, is we work, you know, we're trainers. And this is a picture taken from our Retail Success Summit, which is the world's largest educational event for independent retailers. It happens once a year in Grand Rapids. This year, uh, clearly, we can't have a large in-person in event like this, but we are going virtual. And if you're interested in attending the virtual Retail Success Summit, it happens next week, go to our webpage, whizbangtraining.com, and you can learn more about it there. But it's not enough about me. Now let's talk about you and this new world that we live in. So right now, let's just recognize there are problems. I don't need to tell you that. You know that. But, uh, you know, it's worth talking about. So the, the, the main problems that I see right now are the economy is bad and i don't know if it's getting you know i, I don't know what's going to happen i don't know if there's going to be that v-shape recovery that everyone hopes for or whether you know we're going to shut down again nobody knows uh, what's going to happen and uncertainty leads to people not spending as much so let's just recognize that that's a problem and also you know the economy is you know i mean we are uh if you know the economies economists don't all agree but between the uncertainty and a poor economy we got we have some problems don't we but that's okay because with problems there are also some real positives one positive there's a lot less stores a lot less 
Uh, you know, I've heard lots and lots of statistics about the number of malls that are going to close by 2025, the number of department stores that are closing. And when a department store closes, it affects everybody in a mall. When a, an anchor closes in a strip center, it affects everybody in that center. So there is going to be a domino effect and there is going to be a, there are going to be a lot less stores in three years than there are than there were four months ago. And that's a positive because there's less competition. Yes, the online merchants are always going to be there, but uh, that whole brick and mortar competition is gonna be a lot less. Here's the other thing that I really, there, there are the next two things that I'm gonna share with you, I think are the most important things. And even though the economy is poor, there is, or, you know, there is still a lot of money in the economy, trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. And that money finds itself. It finds its way to something that's valuable to the people who own it. And where that money, I believe, is going to go is to flower shops, is to uh, you know, it, it is to quilt stores and hobby stores and things like that. People are have money to spend. Think about what you used to spend your money on. You would go out to eat once or twice, some of you six or seven times a week, you know, but so dining is an experiential spend. Uh, going to concerts is an experiential spend going to sporting events, you know, this is money spent on experiences. And a lot of people aren't going out to eat. I know we're not going out to eat nearly as often. Uh, our oldest son goes to the University of Michigan. I guarantee you that I will not be, even if they are playing in the big house with its 110,000 seats, I guarantee you I will not be going there. I don't think you're gonna see very many sellout crowds at big sporting events. So people still need experiences. They still want to feel good. They still want those experiences that make them feel alive, uh, but they just have to find them someplace else. So if I was a florist, I would consider doing online classes. I would find other ways to meet your customers' needs for experiences. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. The other thing that I think is so important and so valuable to recognize is I think that there has there is a renewed appreciation for local. Yeah, I, I've never been a big fan of the shop local movement, even though, you know, I mean, I appreciate it, I support it. And if you ask Susan, I support it like crazy on a Saturday shopping spree. I'll go to six or seven different stores rather than one store just because I want to support the local merchants. But it, the shop local movement never really gained traction, in my opinion, because people really didn't feel the need to support. You know, I mean, it was sort of based on guilt. And But here's what's happening now, in my opinion, is people are recognizing that if they don't support their local community merchants, their brick and mortar, florists, you know, all the different retailers, that they're going to go away and that their communities will be poorer for it. And I think that, they, that if you take all of that, that people are looking for a place to spend their money, they're looking for experiences, they're looking for relationships, they want to support you if you do business the right way. I think that all really leads to the future is bright for you, assuming you're good, right? You can no longer just open your doors and hope that you're going to be successful. You need to be good. One of the things that uh, I'm seeing is this whole pandemic and all of the things that we've talked about here are accelerating trends. So if you're a bad merchant, you will go out of business faster than you would have pre-pandemic. If you're a great merchant or even a really good merchant, you're a good florist, you are going to become so much more successful so much more quickly than you would have pre-pandemic. So there's all sorts of things going on right now. 
And your challenge and your opportunity is to understand what's going on, get in front of the curve, be a, an astute merchant, and do good work. Do good work. So the metaphor that I want to use with you here today is the metaphor of the freighter versus the dinghy. And this picture was taken, you know, uh, a quarter mile from our office on Lake Michigan, and that is a Great Lakes freighter. And a freighter has enormous advantages, doesn't it? It's big. It can plow through the roughest seas. Uh, it can carry enormous amounts of cargo. And, you know, Amazon.com would be an example of a freighter. Or if you are in the pet industry, Chewy.com would be an example of a freighter. You know, the big, huge e-commerce merchants, you know, they have, they have advantages. They have data. They have capital. They have all of those things. But, uh, and, and just recognize it. Good for them. But then you, you, the flower shop owner. You are the dinghy. You are the little boat. And what is the little boat able to do? The little boat is able to change directions at the course of a dime. The little dinghy is able to go where the freighter wouldn't, I mean, it's, it's impossible to go. The little dinghy can go into the marshes and the bayous and, and go down those small rivers and things like that. So just recognize that you are the dinghy, that your nimbleness, that your size and nimbleness is your competitive advantage. And if you want to translate that, you could also say your ability to have a personal relationship with your customer, your ability to, uh, you know, really, really be part of your community. All of those are, uh, for lack of a better term, dinghy-esque advantages, but you have to recognize that. You know, you can't bemoan the fact that you're the little guy. You have to embrace the fact that you're the little guy and embrace the advantages that you have as a little guy. And, you know, I believe that the future of independent brick and mortar retail has never, ever, ever been brighter. But it's not going to be the brightest for the people who aren't good. Again, you have to be a good merchant. You have to be the dinghy. You have to be willing to try. You have to be able to zig when the world is zagging. You have to be innovative, creative, excited, enthusiastic. You, you have to be really, really good. Like I said, the future is bright, but it's only bright for those who are ready to embrace it for what it is. So now let's get to marketing. So what is marketing? So I define, Susan and I define marketing as the business activity of presenting products and services to your potential customers. And I would also say your current customers in such a way that make them easy, uh, eager to buy. You know, so the old model of marketing was to get people, you know, for most uh, independent brick and mortar retailers, and even for you as flower shops was to get people to come into your store and place an order, pick up the phone, place an order, go to your website and place an order. But mostly it was about getting people, moving people to where you wanted them to go. And here's where it's all starting to change. Now, marketing, as it's defined here, is to get them eager to buy, and you have to do it in different ways than before. It's no longer about you getting them to do what you want them to do. Now it's about you doing what they want to do. The customer is now in charge. Uh-oh. I am not advancing. Well, let me do it that way. <laughs> WWMCW. So when I say doing it the way that they want to do it, what I'm talking about is WWMCW. WWMCW is a, a term that Susan and I coined, and it's an acronym for what would my customer want? You see, you know, again, it used to be about you getting them to do what you wanted them to do. Now it's about you meeting them where they want to be. You know, a lot of people used to, like my favorite florist, I like going in there. I like picking things out. I like seeing. I like smelling. I like touching. But not anymore. People don't like to shop as much. People want what we're calling 
an omni experiential retail you know the omni experiential retailer so ww mcw what would my customer want needs to become part of the way that you think it's no longer about training your customer i'm keeping coming i'm coming back to it it's now about letting your customer train you that's what we're talking about when we talk about omni experiential so uh everybody wants to shop differently everybody wants different delivery everybody wants all these different things and it is now officially the age of the customer so you have to give them the experience that they want not give them the experience you want to give them i know for some people that's a hard pill to swallow but that, you know, again, you want to accelerate your growth. You want to position yourself to be the go-to florist in your community. This is the way you have to think. WWMCW, Omni Experiential. So once you've decided how you're going to meet your customers, and we're going to talk about more about that in just a moment, it's so important that you communicate with your customers. If you're doing all these great things, if you're living by WWMCW and you're thinking about your business from your customer's perspective, you have to tell them, you have to communicate with them. I was talking to a client uh, just last week and you know we were trying to, they were trying to understand why they, you know, why things weren't going as well as they wanted them to go. And I, you know, I always sort of ask a standard set of questions. And one of the questions was, how often do you send out an email? And he goes, uh, he said, oh, once a month or once every six weeks. And I said, well, there's the problem. You know, you don't call your wife once a month or your husband once a month. The people you love and cherish, you communicate with them often. You communicate with them regularly. And the same holds true with your customers. I hope that you love and you cherish your customers. So I really wanted to put this early on in this uh, presentation because it is so important that you are not shy about communicating with your customers. You know, I would much rather see you communicate too much and lose the occasional email subscriber or lose the uh, social media follower than not communicate enough and lose customers through indifference. So now we're talking about Omni Experiential, the Omni Experiential retailers. Retailer, what are you trying to do? You're trying to give them more buying options, more shopping options. Again, it's not just about getting somebody to pick up the phone or come into your store or go to your website. Now it's about all sorts of things. It's about really doing all of them and making them really available to everybody. Some people are going to want to come in store, but a lot of people aren't. A lot of people still don't want to go into stores. Uh, and you know, that's a problem for you, isn't it? Because I can buy flowers at my local grocery store. My superstore that I go to when I grocery shop, they have a beautiful floral section. This is your challenge, right? Your challenge is to be so good that I don't want to pick up my flowers at Myers. I wanna pick up my flowers from my local community florist. So, and if I don't want to go into the store, into the store, you need your job is to make it easy for me to buy. Social media, more and more people are letting people buy on social media. We're going to talk about that a little later. Of course, uh, the floral industry. You know, you guys have long been into uh, e-commerce and allowing people to order online, phone. You've always been big and good at phone sales. Something else that we're starting to see a lot more of is a lot more shopping by appointment. Uh, and it's starting to diminish because things are opening up. But if things close down again or they get dampened by you know governmental order, it is important that you find a way to keep your customers safe. Let's uh, there isn't a slide about this, but I want to get uh, I want to mention this really quickly. Uh, it's we, we call it safety marketing. 
And I believe that the vast majority of uh, people in the world right now find safety incredibly important, that they have a loved one who may be compromised, that they don't want to be compromised themselves. Shoot, I'm 63 years old. <laughs> I don't want to be compromised. So uh, one of the best ways for you to engender loyalty is to have a very, very clear set of safety protocols that can show your customers that keeping uh, them safe, that keeping your team safe, that keeping yourself safe is important. It's a priority to you. So that's safety marketing. But then it's not just doing it, it's communicating it. In fact, it's over communicating it. So when you're talking about what you're doing to keep people safe, you can also talk about the fact if you come into the store, we're doing everything we can to keep you safe. However, of course, you can go to our website and buy, you can call us up on the phone. If you love coming in the store, but you want to get in or get out, or maybe you want to come in before hours, store out, regular store hours or after, let us know. We're happy to accommodate you, but uh, we're happy to create a shopping appointment or a, a you know an appointment-based experience for you. So not only do they want more buying options, and at some level, I'm speaking to the choir here because you have been delivering way more than anybody else, but in-store, curbside, local delivery, shipping, all of these things, again, it's all about letting your customer decide how they want to spend their money with you. So let's go through a couple things here uh, before we get to the Q&A. These are just tactics that you can use. Uh, Social Media Live, there's Facebook, but there's also Instagram. Social Media Live is becoming really, really, really important. And if you want, you know, so there's two different paths, so to speak. And one is this content, these fun shows. And I mentioned it earlier. If you could create virtual um, floral arrangement sh uh, shows, this would be a perfect way for you to engage your audience and sell flowers. So imagine this real quickly. This is both selling and content. So you say, I'm going to do a, uh, I'm going to build this arrangement on Saturday night. So if you want to build this arrangement, come in and we'll sell you all of the flowers. They're prepackaged. Then on Saturday night, we're going to go live and together we're going to build this beautiful, beautiful bouquet, this beautiful arrangement. So uh, doing live social media to engage your people, to teach them, to entertain them, to give them solutions to their problems. You know, that's what we call content and fun. But there's also QVC. Hey, you know, we've got tulips on sale today. You want some tulips? Put uh, sold in the comments below or Call us up. We'll have them available for you at curbside. And then there's another thing that you can do is like I referred to earlier is we call them, oh, by the way, you do a show and oh, by the way, uh, if you need the flowers to participate in this show, you know, we've got them for sale. We've got them all put in a bundle for you. So it's a great way. Another way to use Facebook Live and a lot of our clients are having great success with this is to invite your vendors, to invite celebrities, to invite uh, celebrity, uh, you know, florists, you know, the designers. Get If you can get a great designer to come on your show for a half hour or an hour, people will really, really respond to it. So this is something new that we haven't really seen emerge until now, but it's uh, going to be a big part of the future, and I'm encouraging you to consider making it a big part of your future. This is the slickest idea I had heard in a long time. When I first heard this, I was like, this is great. It is a florist uh, here in West Michigan, and it's called the Refillables Program. And so our friends, Lori and Holly, they have a florist, they are florists, and they have a gift shop, so it makes it even better. They really like to drive traffic. 
So you can have a refillables program. I'll show you more in just a second. You can do it weekly. You can do it monthly. Containers are important, but here it is, you know, so here's what they do. So I'm just looking at the right side of the your screen where it says joy and believe. And so here's what happens. When someone buys that container, that refillable container, or if they get that container through a partnership with a local nonprofit organization, whoever owns that refillable container can come in once a week, once a month, whatever you choose, and then Kennedy's Flower will refill it. So, you know, and they don't fill it with the most expensive flowers, but what they're doing is they're driving traffic. People are coming into the store to refill their container. And then when they're in their in the store, of course, they're looking around and Kennedy's have, a, I mean, their stores, I mean, uh, uh, Holly and, and, and Lori are wonderful merchants. So their store is filled with attractive merchandise. And so people end up buying what really what you're doing is you're buying foot traffic. But we've had people in so many industries take this idea and go, wow, Quilt stores use a, a spray starch, a refillable spray starch. Pet stores have small bags that are refillable for dog treats. One of our clients is a tax store. They sell stuff for horses and people who ride horses. Uh, this person, Hope, she attributed $60,000 in six months to visits associated with her refillable program. People came in with their little bag for their horsey treats, and then they bought this, that, and the other. Somebody bought two saddles. Saddles are not inexpensive. So I'm just asking you to think about this because this is a wonderful, wonderful, proven marketing tactic for you as a florist. And then finally, I'm sharing the name game here and uh, we wanna post inside and outside the store and post on social media. This is what I mean. We learned about this from our friend Kelly Larson here in Spring Lake, Michigan. And so every day at the front porch, uh, Kelly puts out a new name and she posts that name, you know, so that's a, that, that sandwich board is on a busy street. And on this particular day, that day name was Alex. So she puts it on the sandwich board that's on this busy street and everybody looks because Everybody wants their name up there because everybody wants a free ice cream cone, but she also posts it, posts it on social media. And you can see this is in one day, 87 shares, 206 comments, and the comments are all people telling other people named Alex that their name is up and they have to go. Here's the thing. They get a small ice cream cone. But people bring in six or seven people. They bring in their friends. They bring in all these people. So what can you give away that is inexpensive yet valuable to the people who win it that will get people into your store or will get people to your website? Here's one more example of the name game. This is a, a client of ours. She owns, uh, well, now one uh, eco-friendly natural skincare store in Windsor, Ontario. And so she gave away a free soap when she had did the name game. And you can see 105 people engaged, 62 people shared, 271 people commented. And Deborah was part of our Platinum Mastermind group, as were Lori and Holly, by the way, which is our highest level group. And because she's, uh, you know, that kind of merchant, a really savvy merchant, she really focuses on lifetime value of a customer. And she extrapolated from the new customers she got one August, the first month she did the name game, she extrapolated from that that the lifetime value of the customers she had acquired in one month was over $100,000. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how you build a business. It's by thinking and doing, and these are just a couple of wonderful, wonderful tactics that I know will work in your flower shop. You know, we could, I mean, literally, we have a three full day, pro, I mean, full 
three-day programs that we do here in the office just on marketing. But I just wanted to share with you, you know, a couple of marketing tactics that I know will work in your flower business. So I just wanted to finally, you know, this is a, you know, we're, we're, we're getting a lot of information into a little bit of time. But if you liked what you heard today, if you think these ideas are valid and will work for you, if you think that my perspective on the future is valid, I'd encourage you to, you know, to go and take advantage of some of our resources. These are all free resources. Of course, we have programs and products and, and you know, all sorts of ways that you can invest to get better. But uh, these are our free resources. If you go to whizbangtraining.com, you can sign up for our tip of the week. And you every Wednesday, you will get a text tip. Uh, and every Monday, you will get a video, a re, an episode of Real Retail TV. We have an incredibly robust uh, social media group called Whizbang Retailers. And I would encourage you, there's 4,500 people. It is incredibly positive and proactive and, uh, you know, people encouraging, supporting, you know, sharing all of those things. So I, I would encourage you to go there and uh, you can go to all of the major social media platforms and learn more there as well. We would love to help you in your journey as a independent brick and mortar flower shop. Okay. All right. Let's see. Do we have any questions? All right. If you do have any questions, feel free to type that question in uh, the upper right hand there. Um, I do have one question to kick it off. So what is the most cost effective way to reach customers to ask them what kind of products and services they want from us? I think how oh, would absolutely. best so go about doing it. And that's a great question, by the way. And it, it, because it leads to something that's really important, which is the importance of your email database. Way too many, excuse me, way too many people right now, retailers, put way too much trust in social media. When I say trust, I mean, they're putting their eggs in that basket. They're building followings on social media. But the thing about social media is social media is a rented relationship. If you've been part of Facebook for any amount of time, you've known that in the beginning, you built a community, right? You spend a lot of energy building this community, building your likes, building it up. And then all of a sudden now you've got to pay, right? You want to talk to the community that you've spent your sweat and blood building. You now have to pay. And, and that trend is only going to accelerate in my opinion. Look, Mark Zuckerberg is not doing this because he likes you. He's doing it because it's a business. It's a free platform. And that's all well and good. But in my opinion, the major function of social media is to engage your customers. But just as importantly, if not more importantly, is to convert those people into email addresses. So back to the question. What's the best way to engage and ask people what they want? It's to send them emails. The other thing that, you know, it, I don't know if the, the, the person who asked the question is open for foot traffic right now, but what I found was incredibly important is just having conversations. You know, your regular customer comes in and, you know, hey, can I ask you a question? You know what would you like to what would you like me to to see us carry you know and just ask that question here's a way to look at it too so you should i i love the impulse to ask your customers but something else to ask is to ask your team so I, i'd like you to think of this concept of called adjacency in this square i hope you can see it i can't see my face so Emily, can you see the square that I'm putting up in here? Yes. Okay. So, so this square represents your current merchandise mix. And your challenge to get more business from your current customers is to what I call adjacency. So how do you stretch your mix 
while still remaining true to who you are. So here's a, here's a story. So I was in the kite business, but then one day I realized I was in the fun business. And once I realized in the, I was in the fun business, my adjacency, you know, kites was my primary, you know, product. My adjacencies became toys. And that allowed us to grow in a very, very real way. Uh, if I hadn't gotten into toys, we, we wouldn't have made it. And so I'm asking you to go to your staff, go to your team and say, what else can we sell to our current customers that still remains true to who we are? And that's why so many uh, flower shops that I know, the better flower shops, also have a real robust gift selection because people aren't buying flowers from you. They're buying a sense of gracious living. They're buying an emotion that they're giving. They're, you know, the, 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 the flowers represent something, something here in your customers. And tapping into that by asking your customers, by asking your team, by thinking long and hard about the business you're really in, that's how you're going to get that answer. So that was a great question. Thank you. It was a long roundabout answer, but it was a great question. It was a good answer. And one other question we have before we call it a day. If um, Susan is asking if I wanted to get into having, you know, hosting Facebook Live. Yes. What is the best to learn how to do that? Okay. Hey, that's a great question, Susan. Uh, here's how you do it. You just screw it up. Uh, you know, and 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 so I'm I'm being only a little flippant right now. You can buy, you know, fancy lights, but I'm telling you, whoops, end of slideshow. Okay, are you still with me? Yes, we're here. We're here. Okay, good. All of a sudden it wasn't on my screen. Uh, this is plenty good. Now, this is a, you know, a newer generation iPhone, but this has got a wonderful camera on it. And, you know, you can buy lights and, you know, I've got some relatively inexpensive LED lights right here. I think I spent $125 each, but I mean, I, 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 was, oh, I was only being half serious. No, I was being half serious, but half, you know, I was being half serious when I say you just got to start. You just got to start. And the reason that I say that is because you're going to make mistakes. You're going to be nervous. Your framing isn't going to be right, uh, you know, once or twice. But this whole idea of being yourself and being vulnerable is very, very, very powerful. Let me share something with you, Susan. So we have a uh, client here in West Michigan, or she's in Michigan. She's in Bay City, actually. And she has a knitting store. And, you know, uh, in Michigan, we went into, you know, I mean, full lockdown, full, you know, a shelter in place. But she needed, you know, I mean, she, it's her, it's her store, it's her business. She needed to, to make money. So she started doing Facebook Lives. And she, her sales were up by her doing Facebook Lives by herself. She made more money being closed and having no staff and doing Facebook Lives than she did when, when she had her store open and she was doing business and all those things. But here's the, the important thing and how it ties back to my answer to you, Susan. In the beginning, she was terrified. But guess what? She did it. And the first couple were rough and you know she made some mistakes. But her people were rooting for her. She was being authentic. She was being vulnerable. They stuck with her and she had a great run. And now it's a regular part of the way she does business. You see, that goes back to this whole omni-experiential retailer that I was talking about earlier. So before she was to drive them into the store and sell them knitting supplies kind of retailer. Now she has built her website out. She is doing Facebook Lives on a regular basis, twice a week rather than every day. But now it's part of the way she does business. And I want to share one final thing with you here, Susan, and everybody else who is watching this, is 
you know, I mentioned our Platinum Mastermind group, and there is a uh, a very well-known voiceover instructor who is also, you know, a, a, an actor you would recognize. His name is David Lawrence the 17th, and uh, he's a friend of ours, and we were in a mastermind together, and we had recently, in January, we had our mastermind meeting in Los Angeles, and we were like, David, can you teach us live? You know, can you teach us lighting? Can you teach us storytelling? Can you teach us how to use this medium, live medium, to promote our businesses? And so we were, you know, so he was teaching us lighting and, you know, all this all this stuff. And it was good. But then finally, one of our members, uh, you know, she's in, in her mid-60s. She has a quilt store uh, on the East Coast. You know, she just sort of said, you know, David, this is all great, but I just can't see myself doing that. You know, I, I'm, I, I, I won't look good on camera. She had, she had all these fears. And David stopped. She said, he just said, whoa, 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 stop. Everybody stop. And he made this incredibly impassioned speech, you know. And he said, look, here's the deal. You are enough. You are enough. So, Susan, if you want to do Facebook Live, just recognize that in the beginning, it's going to be a little rocky, but you are enough. You're going to make mistakes, but you are enough. And if you've been building goodwill with your customers for any amount of time, they're going to stay with you. They're going to support you. They're going to put a bunch of hearts when you get, seem a little nervous. They're, they're, going to, they're going to show you the love. You know why? Because you are enough, Susan. Okay, I hope that helps. That is great information. And thank you so much, Bob. This was helpful. I do have to say we started doing Facebook Live here. So for those of you watching, um, if you follow us on Mercury Network Facebook, you will see us. And I will admit, too, we had a few flubs in the beginning, and it's okay. <laughs> it's all about putting yourself out there. So you can do it. We can do it. Yeah. Uh, it was great. It's been great. So um, I do want to say uh, we will have this webinar is going to be available on demand if you want to go back and watch, rewatch it on our Mercury Network YouTube channel. We'll also send out an email with the recording so you can watch it again. There's also a handout there um, in here so that you can print out the slides. Um, like I said, make sure you follow us on our Mercury Network Facebook page. You can find out when we're going to be doing our next webinar. And we want to thank you all for being here today. And Bob, thank you so much for being with us again. And good luck next week at the summit. All right. Thank you for having me, Emily. I'm, and thank you for everybody who is watching live. And thank you for everybody who is spending the time watching the recording.